First up, weeks after India and China came back from the brink of a serious conflict, Beijing is needling Delhi once again. According to an 11-year-old treaty, it's supposed to share hydrolo hydrological data on the Brahmaputra River during the flood season with India. It hasn't this year, citing technical reasons. Interestingly, the same isn't a problem when it comes to sharing data with Bangladesh. Not for nothing is the mighty Brahmaputra often described as the river of sorrow. With seven districts in Assam inundated and around 160 reported dead, the Brahmaputra extracts a deadly toll every year, which is why hydrological data from the monsoon months, May to June, enables the water authorities here to predict whether floods are likely. This time there was no such data because the Chinese said they were not in a position to do so. China's foreign ministry spokesperson said, and I quote, For a long time we have conducted cooperation on the river data with the Indian side, but to upgrade and renovate the relevant station in the Chinese side, we do not have the conditions now to collect the relevant statistics of the river. Were the Chinese telling the truth? The word from Dhaka is they had received the hydrological data from the Chinese, yet China refused to share it with India. The reason could be the Doklam standoff. The standoff took place in June. This is the time when data is shared by mutual agreement. But there was nothing forthcoming from the Chinese. This even though India pays China around 82 lakhs for the service. China's behavior is similar to the denials from Beijing over reports they were building the Zangmu Dam on the upper reaches of the Brahmaputra in Tibet. The dam was built on the Great Bend, where the river changes course to enter Arunachal Pradesh. China claimed it as a run-of-the-river project, which is not true as water is being dammed for another purpose. The Zangmu Dam is one of an estimated 17 dams that will direct water to northern China. The dam also reiterates China's claims to Arunachal Pradesh and will be used as a lever to possibly blackmail India. China has refused to sign international agreements that would require it to be a responsible upper riparian state and not misuse the water or use it as a political tool against neighbors. China sees geopolitical advantage in every liver it can use, even water. Bureau Report, we on. Joining me on the broadcast right now to make more sense of this development is Dr. Uttam Kumar Sinha. He's a fellow at the IDSA. He's joining in from New Delhi. Dr. Sinha, good evening. Thanks very much for speaking with us here at WEON. Is it too simplistic to see China's failure or uh, reluctance in sharing data from the Brahmaputra with India as a fallout from the Doklam standoff? Well, it does show China's intention quite clearly in sort of stalling the process that was started 2002 in terms of sharing the hydrological data. Not having shared it this year uh, is a matter of concern. Um, and the argument and the reason that they give that uh, they are upgrading the hydrological stations in Tibet is rather specious. Uh, more so because uh, we hear from the news report that the same hydrological data has been given to Bangladesh. So there is a matter of concern, but more than the concern is the intention of, of China that we have to understand. And that intention is something that we need to calculate as a lower riparian country vis-a-vis -vis China, that how shall we now uh, sort of counterbalance their hydro hegemony or counterbalance their hydro superiority. And I think India has a lot of role to play here, which uh, I'm sure requires uh, a great deal of attention at the policy level. So what exactly do you feel are the possible solutions at India's disposal as a lower riparian state in this case? Well, I think on the Brahmaputra, India has many options. Uh, it can be a downstream developer of water resources. I don't think we need to be over, overly concerned about China's upstream position. It's a geographical reality that we have to understand. But I think for us, it will be important to have a Brahmaputra basin arrangement with Bhutan and Bangladesh because large part of the Brahmaputra flows from India to Bangladesh. And I think this is one move that India should consider very strongly and, and sort of detach itself from the overly sort of perversive presence of, of China on the Brahmaputra. 
I think there are other ways also that India can uh, reposition itself as an important downstream developer. Uh, the Mekong Ganga Corporation is an important uh, uh, level of uh, engagement with uh, the Southeast Asian countries, especially the Mekong countries, uh, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, and Myanmar. And I think we recently had a Mekong Ganga Corporation level discussion. And I think rivers here, downstream of China, needs to be engaged in a more collective fashion, uh, whether it's culture, commerce, trade, uh, rivers can be a unifier and India can play uh, an important and critical role in, in forming this so-called downstream riparian coalition from the Ganga Meghna Basin to the Mekong Basin. Sir, keeping in mind how long uh, the Doklam standoff took to diffuse, keeping in mind also the fact that these are the same two countries uh, back at loggerheads in some ways, do you feel that this too is going to be a long, drawn-out battle as far as uh, receiving that critical data from China goes? Well, these are very important data, as I said. These data are important. It also opens up a level of water cooperation with China, which is also equally important for us. Uh, remember the situation we are in. We are with China, a lower riparian country, and therefore we have uh, reasonable uh, concern uh, with China on, on uh, flood data sharing, like we are an upper riparian with Pakistan and Bangladesh, and we have a certain degree of responsibility. Uh, China, of course, has a very different hydrological behavior. Uh, it sort of uh, does not uh, agree with any international uh, agreement on water sharing uh, principles. It, it sort of formulates its own uh, river politics with uh, various countries. Uh, it uses uh, the classic ground sea model of uh, force and consent. It uses rivers to sort of politically harness many of its uh, uh, advantages. It uses rivers as a, as a leverage. It, from time to time, it uses rivers as a bargaining tool. So I think China's behavior is, is dramatically different from what, uh, what India behaves with his uh, lower riparian countries. Absolutely. And we have to really understand this uh, hydrological behavior of China. And, and, but we need to refashion our own approach as a lower riparian country. Right. And the good thing about the Brahmaputra is that uh, much, of the, the much of the flow is on our side. And therefore, we can manage a lot of the excess flow through a better flood monitoring system, through better uh, flood mitigation approaches. So I don't think it's, it's a huge uh, uh, alarming situation that the Chinese don't give us the data. Right. Uh, we have the wherewithal probably, and it's a wake-up call for us to really manage uh, on our side many of the issues that we can actually manage. So perhaps this is once again uh, more of a symbolic uh, standoff uh, than anything else. Stay with me, Dr. Sin. I'm also joined uh, on the broadcast by Andre K.P. Leung. He's an international and independent strategist joining in from Hong Kong. Mr. Leung, good evening. Thanks for speaking with us. Uh, what do you put China's failure uh, to share this data on the Brahmaputra with India down to, especially since it's not been uh, as hesitant or reluctant in sharing that very same data with Bangladesh? Well, I think that the China, um, uh, the, as the spokesman uh, said, uh, and it of course uh, can be verified, uh, that there have been agreements with the uh, Indian authorities to share the data. I mean, that the sharing happened in the past, it's not as if China has not shared the data before. It is only uh, obviously it was stopped during the Dockland standoff. Uh, and of course, that there are other issues uh, involved uh, over the Dockland um, dispute uh, or, or crisis. Uh, for example, the, um, the passage of the pilgrims uh, was stopped, but it's now being reopened. So I think that uh, um, to say that China is now closing in uh, on, uh, uh, on India again um, doesn't necessarily square with the facts. I mean, if China wants to, uh, again, provoke a, a kind of uh, confrontation with India, I mean, they could have done other things as well. Um, uh, so I think that, um, of course, uh, if, if that's the case, um, the Indian authorities should press the Chinese authorities and they ask for an explanation. I don't know why the, if the data uh, was now being shared as reported um, uh, with uh, Bangladesh and, and, and uh, with some other countries and not with India. And that could, could be a cause for a specific inquiry. 
but I don't think that uh, China necessarily uh, used the, the rivers uh, as a kind of a weapon. I mean, um, obviously, uh, using the kind of uh, things uh, as a pressure for other countries happens for all other countries. For example, uh, even India, of course, exerts influence on Bhutan, for example, uh, on uh, all its weaker neighbors. But I think that this is, uh, can be expected, and especially when the relationship between the two countries is not at its highest, um, and it caused problems. But I think since the Dockland issue has now been resolved, um, I don't think that um, you know, so if, uh, the wounds would necessarily have to be reopened. Uh, and in fact, uh, Pres um, uh, Prime Minister Modi attended the, the recent BRICS uh, summit right. uh, hosted by China. And I think that both countries should look for areas for cooperation and better understanding. Absolutely. But uh, reports also suggested that uh, Mr. Modi chose to attend uh, uh, the BRICS summit because uh, that was hanging over China's head, that if he doesn't choose to attend Xiamen, there might have been a cancellation of the summit altogether. Uh, very quickly, I'm running out of time. Uh, Dr. Sinha, would you like to respond to some of the comments made by Andre? Well, I think there's always room for cooperation. And uh, since we have an MOU with China, it's important that China, uh, in a sense, respects the MOU. It has been sharing the hydrological information. We've been uh, receiving uh, those information. Uh, we can trust China, but we need to also verify those data. I think it's a bit of a, 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 bit of a, a, a stumbling uh, sort of issue now that the China has suddenly decided uh, not to uh, give us the hydrological data. It could be true that they are upgrading the hydrological station, but uh, it does create a bit of uh, doubt in, in the mind of uh, our own planners this side uh, in the sense of reading the intentions of China, particularly post Doklam. Sure. We'll uh, leave it at that. I guess we'll have to brace ourselves for uh, back and forth diplomatically once again. Uh, on that note, Dr. Uttam Kumar Sinha and, of course, uh, Andre Leung, thanks very much, both of you, for Thank joining you. in on uh, the broadcast this evening. We uh, will move on, though, that hydrological data received at the right time is crucial if any country is to minimize the impact of floods. Bangladesh, which sits downstream of three rivers, regularly receives such data from China, which is the upper riparian state sitting at the source of one river, the Yalung Tsangpo, also known in India as the Brahmaputra. Vyond's Bangladesh Bureau Chief Sada Madi sends us this report. Bangladesh sits downstream of three major rivers, the Brahmaputra, Ganges and the Meghna. The total catchment area of these rivers is 1.72 million square kilometers. Only 7% of this river area falls within Bangladesh. The authorities say Bangladesh is extremely dependent on the hydrological data from upstream countries such as China and India. We are getting data from China, from Nepal and from India. For flood forecasting of Bangladesh. So in that case, the China data, we easily get it by email. And for Nepal, they used to publish in the website, and we use that data. And for India, we have an arrangement for three rivers. For Ganges, we are getting data from two upstream points. For Brahmaputra, we are getting data from four upstream points. For Magna, we are getting data from three points. We use those data in our model as an assumption, an estimate of input. Based on that, we forecast our flood. China shares the water level data with Bangladesh every 12 hours. With the present available hydrological data, Bangladesh says it can make predictions about the likelihood of floods up to a maximum of three days. We don't get data from the upper region countries. Then flood may come suddenly. Well, nowadays, what happens, the, there are some international agencies who, who monitor the whole glo total globe uh, and the weather of the uh, total globe uh, through satellite. And we get from other hand also, from other source also. But uh, India's neighboring country and upper richest country, upper country, and uh, if we get data from them, uh, it, it is better and it will be uh, authentic, dependable. So far, India and Bangladesh appear to have had no problems in the sharing of the hydrological data of the Brahmaputra, Ganges and the Meghna. 
Water resource authorities in Bangladesh say that the hydrological data is crucial for irrigation and livelihood of countries that share common rivers. But when water becomes an issue of geopolitics and when one country sees its control of water as leverage, that's when problems start. In Taka, Sadhamadi, Beyond.